It's the National Football League on EA Sports, where division rivals will clash in the AFC South. It's the Indianapolis Colts and the Houston Texans, and it's all just ahead on Madden NFL 24. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League is on the air. Today, it's an intra-division matchup in the AFC South, as it'll be the Indianapolis Colts taking on the Houston Texans. Brandon Gunn joined, as always, by Charles Davis. As CD, it's been a tough few years here in Houston. Four, four, and three. Those are their win totals the last three seasons. But in is D'Amico Ryan's as head coach. What do you think he brings to the table? And it's interesting you brought up the number three because D'Amico Ryans is the third head coach in three seasons for this team. What he brings to the table, toughness, organization, and hope. He wanted to be the head coach of the Houston Texans, the team he played for. And meanwhile, for the Colts, it's been a pretty hard fall the last couple of years. From 11 wins in 2020 to just four a season ago, how do they get back on the right path? I think they've started back on the right path with the change in the coaching staff, but a lot of it, players already on the roster playing back to the levels we've seen before. And we are underway from NRG Stadium in Houston. And taken down just past the 20 at about the 21-yard line. So here are the Texans now with a fresh face at quarterback, the second overall pick from Ohio State, C.J. Stroud. In only two seasons, Stroud showed all he needed to at Ohio State. All-American, Heisman Finals, program records galore. He looked every bit like the number one overall pick. He went number two, but Houston is thrilled to have him. A oh, man coming off a great rookie year, it's Damian Pierce. Yeah, boy, and it's tough to bring him down that time. He surges forward. He's going to get a full six out of that. Second down. If you're in the offensive huddle, you're smiling after that play because you've certainly got them guessing now. Second and short, could they just hand it off for another big gain, or did they take advantage of this spot to take a big shot downfield? Play action. Stroud now. And he'll be brought down. Colts. Quiddy Pay getting in there and burying him behind the line. But just two plays in, and Charles already their first sack defensively. Yeah, how about that? That didn't take long, did it? And now they look at third down, and that's another time to try and go and get the quarterback, too. And this opening drive not going to plan. This is now third and 13. Stroud here on third and long. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. A big play there as they get the conversion on third and 13. Got to give their offensive coordinator credit there. He got right into the head of the defensive coordinator because right on the heels of the sack on second down, he figured they were going to come at him hard again. And so he went ahead and hit a, what a brilliant call. Screen pass works well enough. They're able to pick up a first down. That's one way to keep that defense at bay. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. Second and ten. Back to throw, here's Stroud. Finds his man, it's John Mechie. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. 11 yards there as they connect on the quick slant. So, Charles, yeah, take nothing away from this young man under center, because I know people think he's got a very bright future in this league, but I have to figure the defensive coordinators love the thought of squaring off against a rookie quarterback. And especially if they have guys they can put together a game plan with, that's going to confuse, disguise a lot of coverage, make this kid think a little bit. Because in college, he's seen a lot of things. Let's, let's not get it wrong here. But at the same time, in the NFL, you can do so much more because of the athletes you have, because of their football IQ. 
And don't forget, you're going to throw a couple extra rushers at him as well. See if he can handle the pressure when those guys come at him. Meanwhile, Stroud's throw taken in by Collins. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. So the completion good for six yards. And it makes it third down and two yards to go. Stroud now on third and two. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And they'll get him to the ground. He has another first down at the Colts 26. Well, they were in search of a short gain on third down, and they wind up nabbing over 20 yards. Normally on third down and short yards, you're thinking of throwing to your tight end. It's just going to be a simple chain mover. But this time they let him roam down the field, and a nice dart picks up the first down and then some. First and ten, it's Pierce. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. Oh, it's intercepted. A drive killer there. Picked off by Zaire Franklin. And the Colts are going to take possession here at their own 33. That time defensively looked like they showed quite a bit of pressure, but backed off, and it proved fruitful. They get the pick. He went through all of his rules about getting rid of the ball quickly because he read blitz. He saw all those people stacked at the line of scrimmage, and then they fooled him by dropping into coverage. Now he's ready to get rid of the ball fast, but guess what? Too many defenders out there. Exactly as you described, an interception. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. They'll start out here with the option left. Only a yard on the keeper, and it'll be second down. Typically on the read option play, when we talk about responsibilities, we're talking about what the quarterback has to go through. How about the inside linebacker, though? His job on this play, shadow the quarterback and hold him to a short gain. Did it to perfection. Second and nine. They'll run with the former Bill, Zach Moss. To the 40 and no further. The razzle-dazzle, though, got him a couple extra on the play. And now a stoppage. It looks like we have a Colt who was shaken up on that last play. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. Third and two. Now a handoff inside. It's Jackson. And good running there as he'll take this all the way up to midfield. That's good for an Indianapolis first down on a gain of 10. That's a very nice game there. A confidence building run. Love the execution up front and the way he pressed the hole. Absolutely perfect. They run on first down with Jackson. And a good run here as he'll rumble all the way down to the 40-yard line. Ten more there and another first down. So back-to-back -back big runs picking apart this defense on the opening drive. I thought this was a passing league. I thought this was the era we were in where the ball was always in the air, right? They didn't get the memo. They didn't get the memo, and I know this to be true. Offensive linemen still, to this day, they want to run the football. They want to fire out and hit people across the line of scrimmage in their clearing space. Now a nice play defensively on first down as this is knocked away and incomplete. When I watched that play, I thought about what my coaches had told me in the past. The biggest teaching point, get your head around. Locate the football so you can make a play on it while it's in the air. That's exactly what he did there. That was nice. Richardson working from the gun. And that nearly an interception here on this 
nice opening drive, but he gets a reprieve. It's third down. I love those corners who can not only cover, but don't mind getting a little physical as well. How about the coverage on that play, knocking that pass away? Here comes the seventh play now of this drive as this is third and ten. On third down, here's Richardson. Let's one go downfield for Pierce. Now he's got his target. It's caught for a Colts touchdown. Alec Pierce, 40 yards. And the Colts use the early turnover to get on the board first here in this one. Boy, just zero hesitation from the rookie passer there, partner. He is coming out firing in this opening quarter. And all the talk leading into this game was that pass rush talking about challenging this guy, getting into his grill, getting into his space. And how about him? Might be his first year in the NFL, but I don't see any fear in him at all. How about that big time throw right out of the gate? Extra point by Gay is up and good. And it's now a 7-0 game. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. So now we get set to see Houston for their second drive of the ball game. They threw an interception the first time they had the football, wound up leading to a touchdown the other way. How do you approach drive number two? Going back to your game plan coming in, everyone has matchups that they like better than others where they think they have an advantage, dial up some of those plays, try and go to those spots, and get your offense moving. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets them to second and four. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. Throwing now is Stroud. That's to the veteran, it's Robert Woods. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 13 yards on his first catch. It's a first down as well. Well, starting drive number two off on the right foot. Completion for the first down. Drive one is the... They had to be pretty frustrating because they moved the football. They just didn't get any points out of it. But warm-up QB, too, is bringing the backup. <laughs> I mean, my goodness, you take them down, you don't score points. You know I'm being totally facetious <laughs> here, right? I'm just kidding. Nice first drive. Rarely do teams score on every single drive in a game, but they like what they did there. They just hope they can pay it off this time with some points. Ball spotted at the 45. Here's a second down and six. They'll bring a tight end in motion right. On second down, here's Pierce. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. Usually we see runs like this as the defense breaks down later in the game, but this guy is setting the tone early, running through all types of tackles and put the defense back on its heels. Now from Colts territory, here's a first and 10 at the 48-yard line. First down, they go right back to Pierce. And great blocking downfield as he's got this almost to the 35-yard line. That's good for a Texan first down, a 12-yard pickup. Pierce with a motivated run there, and no surprise he's motivated this season after a late injury robbed him of a 1,000-yard campaign last year and potentially the rookie of the year. Even still, the fourth-round pick outplayed his slot with over 900 yards in 13 games. And he tries to keep the legs churning, but he's going to be stopped behind the line. Now, during that run, an injury here... We got one of those big blockers in some discomfort. The medical staff will attend to him, and we will step aside. So their task a little bit more difficult now. Second and 13 that they're walking up on. Now to change things up, Stroud will throw it. 
over the middle, and it's incomplete. So many times when we talk about coverage, we're just talking about the defender running with a receiver, but a big part of it is understanding where the football is, finding it. In this case, when it arrived, it wasn't a surprise, and he was able to bat it away. A long way to go here on third down for the eighth play of the drive. Stroud working out of the gun. Man open, that's complete to Dalton Schultz. And this play going to be stopped in its tracks at the 32 and obviously well short of the first down. That pattern and scheme was well defensed on third down. He tried to just sprint from one side of the field to the other, and they got it to him quickly. But no chance at yards after the catch there, and they stop him short. The kick by Fairbairn is good, and they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. So the scoring drive encompasses nine plays, and the net result, three points. Take your disappointment and put it aside. Nine plays, yeah, they want to end up in the end zone with a touchdown. I get that. But sometimes those nine-play drives pay dividends later with another nine-play drive that culminates in a touchdown when they wear down a defense. Fairbair now following the made field goal. He'll send this one away. The return man down to a knee, and this will come out to the 25-yard line. Second drive coming up here for the Indianapolis Colts. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. That confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go-around. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. His first carry of their second drive, pretty solid. And, of course, remember back to their first drive, really strong throughout that one. Not only is he getting good blocking up front, but how about his vision to find the holes? And he's seeing things before they even open and hurtling through them. Richardson's throw into the hands of Pittman here. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. A good pick up there, 21 yards. That's his first catch of the game and an impressive one against multiple defenders. And how about that start? Really aggressive. Yeah, there was double coverage out there, but that didn't stop them at all. They went right at it and defeated it on that play. They run with Jackson out of the gun. Denzel Perryman there to bring him down. If you're a coach, you'll absolutely take that run every time on first down because it really sets you up to go in a number of directions here on second. Here's second and five now from the 37. From the shotgun, Richardson. This pass left side to Downs. And he gets it down a yard or two shy of the 30 before he's out of bounds. A five-yard pass on the heels of a five-yard run. Good enough for the first. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. And they run the option here on first and 10. And he works his way free all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone. A really nice effort that time. 12 yards on the keeper, picking up the first. Pretty nice play here. They go read option, read the defensive end, and when he collapsed down inside, how about the quarterback pulling it, keeping it, and not only getting to the second level, but picking up some really nice yardage. Very, very well read. On the give, here comes Jackson, and he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. Tackled by Jonathan Grenard. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle, that's what we saw right there. Yeah, and that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends, they're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold them to no game. And he'll get them inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. It's a gain of six on the play, and that'll make it third down. After one, seven, three, the score on EA Sports. 
start of the second quarter, and it's the Colts in possession. This will be the eighth play of the drive here, third and four, as they've got it as we resume action. Touchdown! Michael Pittman, a 14-yard touchdown, and the Colts are able to extend their lead. An excellent, long, sustained offensive drive. And now they can look across the field and see a defense that looks a little bit beaten down. Right now, as an offensive coordinator, you're thinking to yourself, can I dial up the knockout punch? Here's Gay now to add the extra point. And this one's right through to make it a 14-3 ball game. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And it was capped off on the touchdown catch by Michael Pittman. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. This fielded right at the goal line. And no alley to be found. The coverage was solid, and he's dropped at the 18. The Houston's offense taking over again. Their deficit is 11, 14 to 3, and needing to get something going here as they come up on first and 10. He's got a man complete. Still going inside the 20. Touchdown, Houston. John Mechie, 82 yards. And the Texans are able to strike quickly here as they are in for six. He put quite a bit of air underneath that touchdown pass. Of course, we knew that he had the strong arm. That part was easy. You can see that throughout his college career. But what you want to know about a rookie is when the pressure's on, can you throw with touch? He just did right there. And boy, it was pretty. Kaimi Fairbairn on for the extra point. He's got it. That cuts the lead. It's now 14 to 10. Those are the ones the offensive coordinators dream about. One play drives from that distance. What an effort. It results in the touchdown. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. And Dallas Flowers going to bring this out of the end zone. And he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And right now they're saying, hey, let's keep this going. Two drives, two touchdowns. Yeah, can't ask for a better start than that, can you? I mean, this is the way you practice it. This is the way you rehearse it. But right now, the play calling, they locked in really well. Sheldon Rankins, former Saint and Jet, there on the stop. Now that's a mountain of a man that just made that stop, isn't it? But he's more than that. This guy's nimble and quick. More than a space eater, he just made a great play there. On second down, here's a run with Moss. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. And that's a nice pickup of a first down on that second down run. And at that yardage gained, they can run that play on any down. Richards into the air on first down. And that going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. Well, it hasn't been a banner first half for the defense trying to cover him today, but they'll take that one right there, helping force that incompletion. Now a second and ten. Richardson on second and ten. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's McKenzie, and he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. Five yards, now it's third and five. 
All that practice time came to fruition on that play. All those timing routes that they work on through training camp, OTAs, minicamp, and just regular season, they got it done on that one. An out cut, ball was delivered, and picked up the completion. Richardson. I uh, had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. Certainly looked like someone was very confident in his ability to fit that one in. I would say he was overconfident because there wasn't a whole lot of separation there. Had that one covered pretty well downfield and knocked it away. To punt on fourth down, here's Rigoberto Sanchez. Back deep is Tank Dell. That's taken on the 25. It'll be a 41-yard punt. Give them five on the return. And the Texans will take over with a first and 10. Heading out is the Texans offense as they get set to take over here. Well, partner, you know, coaches always say that every play is designed to score a touchdown. Sometimes that's not really true, but last drive, that was the case. One play to get into the end zone, and now they'll try to duplicate that success here. And it's rare for those moments to happen. Incredible when they do. And you saw the celebration. Pure, unbridled joy after that one. I don't know what this says about me, but I love successful runs up the middle when the blocking is so well executed like that. And it doesn't matter whether it's zone blocking, whether it's a power scheme, when you have a blocker on a defender and then the running back can read it, find the proper hole and just go, sometimes a thing of beauty. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. DeForest Buckner using that size to force his way in there and make the stop behind the line. I think we got to give it up for him right there. That's a heck of an athletic move for a big man right in the middle of the line. How about the play he makes there? Nowhere to run, and he finishes that one off for a loss. And that's caught inside the 30. And he's brought down after a very nice game. Give him 32 on the play. There's the arm strength that we saw in college and during the scouting process. And really, it's not just the arm strength there, but the placement as well. To me, that was an excellent combination of arm talent and accuracy. So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. Play action. Here's Stroud. Another one caught by Collins. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. Another first down as they call his number again. He's got 15 yards here. They were in zone defensively, went with a crossing route. It's always interesting to watch that chess match. Yeah, and I think safeties don't mind crossing routes against zone because eventually you're going to run into their territory. And that's when they lick their chops in order to get the big hit or a play on the ball. Offensively, Knight. Did he get the feet down? Yes! Touchdown! Dalton Schultz an 11-yard touchdown. And the Texans have taken the lead. There was a lot of zip on that pass, and baseball might have called that a frozen rope. I like it when you bring the diamond into the game. I'm going back to the gridiron. Had some heat on that bad boy. Sometimes you throw a touchdown pass, and sometimes you throw, what, a touchdown strike? There you go. That's my man in concert. Extra point by Fairbairn, up and good. And it's now 17-14. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And tackled at the 21-yard line, so a net negative there of four yards. Indy set to go on offense once more. The last series for him, a little disappointing, forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive, first and 10. They'll start with the option. And they can't bring him down. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. 
A big time gain there on the keeper, using his legs to hurt him. First down. What a run there. I mean, you've got speed, elusiveness, escapability all rolled into one. And we all know that quarterbacks are coached. They get the ball to the guys who could do all the things you just described. You want those guys who have speed, elusiveness, and escapability all rolled into one with the ball in their hands. And guess what? It's him. So there's no sense in throwing it or handing it off when you can do all of that yourself. Good coverage downfield led to him taking off, picking up the first down on a 13-yard run. As we both know, there was a lot that went into why they made him their first-round pick this year. And part of it was what they saw in college, his playmaking ability when things break down. As soon as he saw he wasn't getting a lane to throw, he pivoted. Richardson hit and he fumbles it. Oh, one of the linebackers has got it. And his guys are going to take over at the 34-yard line. He had the option there, decided to keep it, exposed himself and fumbled it. Yeah, and you worry about the hits he's going to take in that situation. In this case, not only does he take the hit, he coughs the ball up, as you noted. Offense back out there along with Damian Pierce. He's over 40 yards here in the second quarter, been nice and effective for them, hasn't he? He has definitely been dependable and really shouldn't underestimate what he's getting done here because anytime you're on a pace that's going to approach 100 yards, You've really done some damage in an NFL game. Well, now he's looking just to add to his totals. Excellent job pushing through tacklers that time to pick up six. Hey, it's not the most spectacular play, but I think most teams will take that every single time for the first play of a drive. Begin the series with positive yardage and set yourself up for a very manageable second down. And Pierce gets it again on second down. Oh, he breaks a tackle, and he's got an alley. And yeah, he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. 68 yards rushing for him as he has been tough to stop here this first half. Partner, there are strong running plays, and then there are plays where you simply outclass the defense, and we saw the latter there. They ran straight up the heart of that front for an excellent game and first down. Simply put, you've got to put more of a fight defending the middle. Otherwise, this is going to be a long game. And they'll go play action here with Stroud. Got a man, it's Collins complete. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight yard gain, second and two. After the penalty, a fresh set of downs. It's first and ten. Pierce now up the middle. And he's going to be hemmed in and brought down right at the line of scrimmage. DeForest Buckner in on the tackle. What an advantage having a lead guy in the middle of the defensive line because not only does he take up the space and let the linebackers run free, but he can also make plays himself, as we just saw there. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. And they'll go right back to Pierce. And a strong run there as he'll maneuver his way down inside the 15. 16 yards on that one, and also a Texan first down. We both know it's difficult, but they made it look effortless out there. Through the air, on the ground, they've moved the ball with relative ease. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. A run for Pierce out of the gun. He's going to get four out of this as he's down to the 10-yard line. This drive is pretty clear. Almost feels like old-school fundamentals, doesn't it? Want to impose their will on the defense? Was that five straight runs? Yeah, five straight carries to start this drive. And like you said, the way it's working, they may just stick with it. Second and six from the 10. Pierce takes it straight ahead. And running room hard to come by here. He gets it down to the eight. Two yards the game there, and now they're left with a third and about four for a first. And that's why you see a lot of teams that like to play 4-3 defense, especially against teams that run the ball really well, because you count on your defensive front, the tackles and the ends, to eat up the blocking in the offensive line and keep that guy in the middle clean so he can roam to the football and make a tackle. In this case, he introduced himself and said, hello, my name is Mike. Now the throw on third down, knocked away and incomplete. That one was tipped up in the air and fortunately fell away for the defense because if the offense is able to grab that one, that's a short little jaunt into the end zone because there's not enough reaction time off of a tip ball for the defense to rally and make a tackle. They were very fortunate on that play. The kick by Fairbairn is good. And 
they stretch the lead to six. It's 20 to 14 now. So the defense are able to force their first turnover of the game, and then they add on to that by getting the field goal. And you don't just want to take the ball away from your opponent, partner. You want to make them hurt as well. And if you don't score yourself on defense, turn it over to your offense and have them put points on the board. the main field goal he'll send this one away and he brings this out past the 20 to the 24 here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over right now they're on the wrong end of the scoreboard and that won't change if this drive ends like the last one when they had that lost fumble so you have a feeling taking care of the football certainly paramount right now yeah, and it's not just the guy who dropped it on the last drive is it that means everyone who might touch the ball is getting the same message guys ball security paramount let's take care of it and if we do we've got a chance to put points on the board so they held him to a short gain on that one and it almost felt like on that first run they were trying to just throw the jab at them. So how do you stop a jab? Get closer and smother it, just as they did on that last play. Quick throw into the hands of Pittman. Powering his way forward. And he takes us beyond the 35 before going out of bounds. 11 yards for number 11. I like watching the wide receiver screen because it's a real teamwork play. Because guess what? The guy catching the ball, he'll get all the credit. But how about the people up to block in front of him, either fellow receivers or offensive linemen? That makes that play a really nice timing play, and sometimes it can break big. They'll run on first down with Moss. And he'll muscle his way up to the 43 for a pickup of right around five. Nice satisfying run on first down for the offense, picking up five, which means defensively, the thought process is entirely different. You don't want to panic, but at the same time, you're saying to each other, we've got to tighten this down. We can't give up gains like that. Second down, here's Richardson. And he couldn't get that one to his man. Short of him, it's low and incomplete. He was looking for Michael Pittman that time. And it's third and five. Now it's Richardson. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have a Colts first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. All right, let's just go ahead and walk through this one pretty easily, right? Blast off the line of scrimmage, get downfield to a certain point, usually around 8 to 10 yards, turn around and make sure the quarterback sees your numbers and set yourself up for the pass. A well-executed curl route by Charles Davis. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 47. A handoff to Moss on the option. He was brought down by Malik Collins. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. Richardson looking to throw. Out of his hands quickly to Pittman. They kept the receiver in the short field, but that let his quarterback get the ball quickly to him before either guy in double coverage could react. And the line to gain here is the 37 on third down. Richardson shotgun on third down. And that is incomplete. As a corner, you have to be able to run with guys step for step downfield and man coverage and make up ground quickly in zone. You have to put yourself in position to make plays just like that one we saw there. So now on comes the field goal unit. And wow, this is no ordinary try here. This will be spotted just shy of mid. Oh, they flip it to the kicker. He looks like he's going to throw it. And all oh, the gamble fails. It's incomplete. It would have been a long field goal. The fake doesn't work out. And this Texans defense stands tall. 
Damian Pierce taking the field with the rest of the Texans offense. He's been good. His guys are winning. So far, the recipe working here in the second quarter. And he doesn't like to just tote the rock. He wants to carry his team on his back. And that's what he's done throughout this game. Yeah, he's done that. He'll be hoping to continue that trend. An excellent way to start the drive there, 18 yards. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, a tight, a sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you make throw it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window, he fired a bullet in there for the completion. Another nice gain. That's now 30 yards between those last two plays. So in the second quarter, he's already up over 100 yards receiving now. And isn't 100 the magic number for a really good game for a receiver? So he got a chance to really shatter that and have a profound effect on this game. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Stroud out of the gun here. Gets the dump off to Pierce. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and it'll be second down. Was that a receiver? <laughs> yeah, actually it was. It was a running back who was a receiver on the play. Ike's been spending time in the receiver drills getting his feet down. Well, those guys out of the backfield, they got to be good, agile with their feet. He showed the agility there with a toe tap. No doubt about it. It's like he went to ballet school, got the toes down, and stayed in bounds. Delivers another one to Pierce. And out of bounds right around the 20. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And that'll leave him with a third and two. Now here's Stroud on third down. Pass taken in by his big tight end. Now the Texans will use one of their two remaining timeouts as they stop it with 11 seconds remaining in this first half. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. The throwing again is Stroud. Over the middle, he gets it to Collins. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. Fairbairn able to put this one through, and that will make this a nine-point lead. So a capper there to a pretty good first half. And I love the way that they put a chokehold on the clock and pretty much drained everything before they put the field goal on the board as they headed into the half. So still time for the kickoff here. One second to go in the half as this one is away. So we come upon halftime with nine points separating these two teams. As we'll get you over to Orlando, where standing by is Jonathan Coachman. He has our EA Sports halftime report. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys in a bit. But first, we welcome everyone to our EA Sports Halftime Report. We were witness to a solid first half from this year's number two overall pick rookie, C.J. Stroud. He came on after a slow start to fire two second quarter touchdown passes and give his guys the lead at the intermission. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three.
The Colts getting the football first, and they trail here as we are back underway in quarter number three. Taken at the goal line. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. The Colts going to take over on offense to begin this third quarter. And they're on the short end of the scoreboard here. Charles, what adjustments, if any, do you think they need to make for the second half? Okay, well, paraphrasing the gold medal hockey winning coach Herb Brooks, I just say you continue to play your game. Throw the ball. They had success doing it in the first half. So make sure you keep getting the ball to your playmakers a little bit more to the perimeter, perhaps. But above all, play your game. Uh, with a rookie quarterback out there, you definitely got to find out how he handles adversity because this one so far hasn't gone according to plan. He's got to fight through it and show him what he's made of. Here's second and ten. They'll go up the middle here with Moss. And only a couple there up to about the 23-yard line. Not the start to the drive they were looking for. That run doesn't do much at all. No, not at all. And it leaves them with third and long. And you know, this is the time of game where these drives really, really start to matter. they got to make some moves. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Now Richardson. Under pressure, and the Texans able to get in there for the sack. Malik Collins drops him for a four-yard loss there, and that brings up fourth down. I'd say it's not panic time yet, but let's be honest about it. Empty possession here, not what you're looking for when you're down a couple of scores. Absolutely not. Trying to start the second half off on the right foot. Unfortunately, going to give the ball up. As Sanchez on to punt here as he sends this one away. Taken at about the 36. It's a return of five following a punt of 42 yards. And the Texans will take over. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. They're rocking and rolling, but the scoreboard doesn't show a big difference. You know, maybe it's one of those games where coaches say you can't miss your turn on offense. I like the way you phrased it, especially with that. I love that rocking and rolling because the explosions on offense are happening. So that's going to get the crowd going. They're loving that. But defensively, they just can't get it together to get the stops they've needed in order to help increase their margin. They've got to find a way, but you're not counting on it. Exactly what you said. Can't miss your turn. Can't miss your opportunity. Yeah, they're going for another opportunity now. That's some good hard running there as he'll push his way forward for about five. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. And Pierce gets it again on second down. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. This will be a loss of three, and now a much tougher third down looming. I'll tell you what, this defense hasn't played its best, but they're still right in this football game. And if they keep making plays just like that, they're going to give their offense a chance. And they'll need to get to the 35 if they want to keep this drive going on third down. Stroud on third down now. To Pierce, they set up the screen. And I don't think he got there, no. He's short by maybe a foot, maybe. Call it fourth and inches. Well, it looks like they got what they wanted. They got the completion, but they weren't able to break any tackles or gain nearly enough yardage to pick up the first down. Now to be fourth and short. So on fourth down, Texan kicker Kaimi Fairbairn comes on. It'll be spotted on the right hash. A 52-yard attempt. And that's off the right upright, and it bounces away no good. And that'll keep this a nine-point game. So distance, not the issue there. He had plenty of leg to get it there. It's that darn upright getting in the way. Always gets in the way of a good time, doesn't it? Because he hit it square, too. Sometimes you can bank one in if you get it on the end of the football. No such luck there for him. Good field position to start the drive after the missed field goal. Here's first down from the 42. They'll start on the ground with Moss. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Some teams like to start aggressive to begin a drive, but this is still what you expect to see in normal situations. Just call a simple run, get a few yards to begin the series, and set yourself up for something bigger on second down. And they'll come up second and seven. On second down, it's Richardson to throw it. Over the middle, complete. That's McKenzie. 
And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. You always worry about those smaller receivers running through that gnarly patch of land in the middle of the field. But he did a really nice job there holding on to the football and protected himself as best he could while completing the play. Moss on the give up the middle. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. You don't see that a ton, do you, with the cornerback coming over to the middle of the field to make a run tackle. That's someone with a ton of confidence to feel like nothing is pressuring him on his side of the field. Sees that the ball's moved to the middle and just sprints over there to help out. He ends up getting the tackle. Well played. Now an option play on second down. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. A really nice effort that time. 12 yards on the keeper, picking up the first. Well, with him trailing here in the second half, maybe his legs can try to give this offense a spark. And that's the benefit of having a young quarterback, right? Having a rookie, a guy who will say, hold on a second, I have a little bit of fearlessness to my game. It isn't working as well the other way. Let's see what I can do to help my team this way. And boy, he did it there. A short throw. This is caught by Cox. And he's down into the red zone at the 16 after a gain of 16. First and 10. I like how they work the tight end on a nice little under route there. And if you're going to give him that much space, he's not going to catch the football. He's going to run away from you a little bit. And that's exactly what he just did there, picking up extra yardage. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. On the option left, Richardson. He will push his way down to about the 14. Two yards the gain on the keeper, and it's second down. Richardson now on second down. Got a man and he hits him in stride. And he's taken down at the seven after a gain of seven. This will be play number eight here on the drive. It's third and a yard. Third and one, Richardson to throw. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. That close on third down, I think everybody probably expecting a run. Instead, they go to the air on third and short yardage. I realize this is a passing league, and they're liable to throw the ball any down and distance. But that short, I do question the call. Run the football and pick it up. Richardson on fourth down. Touchdown, Colts! Mo Alley cox a seven-yard touchdown grab. And the Colts' decision to go for it pays off with six points. And remember, partner, that's a rookie quarterback back there. Apparently, he's getting the hang of this NFL thing pretty quickly. At three touchdown passes, you're right. He looks comfortable. What are they doing? Anything in particular? Well, they keep talking about making sure they're giving him plays that fit his talents and also maybe shrinking the playbook a little bit. They did tell us that. Bottom line, he's really good. Extra point by Gay is up and good. And the lead is down to two. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. And this taken in at the goal line. And he returns this to the 22. Houston set to take over. Still enjoying the lead here in the third quarter despite their defense giving up that last touchdown. Now they'll see if they can get the equalizer here on this drive. They'll start on the ground with Pierce. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. 
Two yards, the loss, second and 12. I'm getting a sense that the momentum of this game is changing since the break. Nice play there, and this D is fired up. So the opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. And Pierce gets it again on second down. And this one also slow and developing as he's maybe getting back here to the line of scrimmage, but not much more than that. I would think as a play caller, you want to look for some quick hitters to your tight end, any type of a route to replace where that linebacker was, because when you saw the speed with which he reacted and stuffed that play, maybe use that speed against him in the future. Back to throw. Here's Stroud. The Colts are going to get him. Down he goes. Samson Abuka in there to drop him for a six-yard loss, and that will lead to fourth down. A third and long, you knew that he was going to throw it. He just couldn't find anybody to throw it to. Yeah, and it shouldn't have been a surprise, but that was perfect execution of their nickel defense. That fifth defensive back, the extra defender, he really tightened up things downfield and coverage, and they were able to get to him in the pocket. Just 34 yards on the punt there, no return. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and 10. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. Good starting field position for them as they come up first and 10, just shy of midfield at the 48. They'll start this drive out on the ground, and he'll take this ahead for about four, second down coming up. But really, that was no surprise there. They've been running it well all game, and I know goals change all the time, but any team will take that type of run each and every time. From the 48-yard line, here's second and six. And Richardson back to throw it. And that's going to be incomplete. He was looking for Isaiah McKenzie that time. And it's third down. On third down, here's Richardson. Tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. Nothing open downfield. He keeps it himself for 11 and a first down. Well, he and his offense were staring down what was likely a three and out. Zero fear from his side, though. Never doubt for a second they pick up the first. He's ready to pull the trigger on a keeper the moment it revealed itself. First and 10, Richardson looks to throw it. That is caught. Michael Pittman with it. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. And going right back to Pittman. And the Colts are going to be looking at first and goal as they move this down to the four-yard line. And these two hooked up on a nice game to play before, and I always admire play callers that see a play that works and go right back to it, so they went right back to him. The reward, they're set up with first and goal. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Here's Richardson to throw. And that is caught. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Isaiah McKenzie from four yards out. And the Colts have scored again in this third quarter, this time to move out in front. Well, to put it mildly, he's been able to dice up this secondary all game long, and this time, that was a missile that he threw into the end zone and adding another touchdown to his ledger. And I think we see these youngsters develop a lot quicker than we ever have because when they get started in this game, they're not just throwing passes around. They're reading coverages early. So now they're like seasoned pros earlier in their career. How about this one here? If they win this ball game, a game ball definitely coming from his head coach. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown.
and able to get this out to the 25. And the Texans set to come onto the field. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away. This time, hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. On the ground, it's Pierce to begin the drive. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Shaquille Leonard in there to blow that play up. As a linebacker, you're taught to stay just slightly behind the ball carrier just in case he makes a cutback. But when you find the gap, shoot it. And he found it all right. Took it straight into the backfield and made the tackle for a loss. Stroud sets up the play action. Airing it out deep for Woods. And this will be caught at the 30. A huge play there for Houston. 49 yards. We have seen big plays from both quarterbacks throughout this game. And there's another one right there. Going back and forth, almost like two excellent guitar soloists trying to top each other with each additional play. So now then, the big play has them all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. Uh, give left side for Pierce. Down at the 25. On second down, here's a run with Singletary. And he'll be taken down after a decent gain, and that will bring us to the end of this third quarter of play. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we play three quarters. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Houston. The Texans on third down. Three for seven so far in this game. They're looking at third and a few inches. Pierce will try to pick it up. Call it no gain that time, and they're going to be left looking up at a fourth and one. On that play, it was the defensive front that won the battle. They outleveraged the offensive line, got into the backfield, and held them to no gain. One score down. Here we go. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. Fourth down, fourth quarter, here's Stroud. And he's caught. Touchdown, Texans. Nico Collins from 19 yards away. And the Texans answer back with a touchdown of their own to take a fourth quarter lead. Those are the types of plays in these moments they were hoping for from this young rookie, able to put him up here in the fourth quarter. How about the kid? You just mentioned it, the fourth quarter. This is when you have to make those winning plays. That's what he just did. Doesn't ensure anything, but he certainly gave his team a heck of a chance, didn't he? They're going to try and run, and he will not get there. He comes up short, and they're unable to push this lead to a field goal as it'll remain a one-point game. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. And they will be looking to answer the touchdown. Their defense just surrendered. Still a good chunk of time remaining here in the fourth quarter and a chance to regain the lead in a tight one. 
And the drive starts with a completion left side. Yeah, that's good for a gain of six. And that'll bring up second down. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You're getting better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. And they run the option on second down. And he'll be limited to a short gain up to about the 34-yard line. Only a yard there on the keeper, and that's going to leave him with a third down. Richardson looking to throw this. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have a Colts first down as he'll be marked down a yard or two past the marker following a gain of six. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down, and that's what he just did. Powers through it, and good vision there as he's across midfield and down to the 45-yard line. Really good effort. He does it himself, picks up 15, also picks up the first down. Well, that's the fear any defense has when the quarterback gets involved in the running game. You don't usually account for him, and he's hurting them today. Yeah, he's been very involved in the running game. Defensively, when you've got the coverage good downfield, how do you account for him, though? Occasionally, you start to spy him. Take someone that's the same agility, who can dance with him, run with him, and try and keep him in the pocket. Yeah, it'll be especially critical here as we come down the stretch in the fourth. Part of the thinking when you bring in extra tight ends, you're hoping that each of your guys gets those one-on-one -on -one blocks and creates a crease for your runner. You know what the converse is, though? You've got to win those one-on-one -on -one blocks. And when you don't, that's the result you end up with. On second down, it's Moss again. And he's going to get this one down near the 45-yard line. Vision is so important for the man in the middle because his ability to, to, to look through all the clutter that's happening in front of him, diagnose a play, and then go make it and finish it, that's when the great ones know that they have the goods. A field goal from this spot likely out of the question. They've got to get closer here on third down. Over the middle, hauled in by Pierce. And he can only get this to the 42-yard line, and that is not near enough. So the completion good for just three. And it'll be fourth down. Oh, it's time to give a little credit there to the defense. They played that very well because it was a drag route. And he ran a little shallower than normal as he worked straight across the field. He was hoping he'd get lost behind the defensive line. But once he made the catch, nowhere to turn up field and gain any yardage. And this is a commentary of today's kickers and just how good they are that a coach would think about running his guy out there to try a 59-yarder. Here it backfires on him, but as a kicker, you have to appreciate the confidence that they showed in you. And now out comes Houston. And they certainly caught a big break with that missed field goal. Instead of trailing, they hold on to that slim lead, and now we'll see how they play this critical fourth quarter possession. And he's fortunate to get anything from that. Give him a yard up to the 49. Nice run defense presented there, and what I mean by that is discipline. Guys filling the right gaps in the right holes, no one over-pursuing, and making a very nice play. From just shy of midfield, here's a second and nine. And Pierce gets it again on second down. And some solid footwork there as he'll take this down to about the 38. 105 yards rushing now for the ball game on 24 carries. Well, it is our business to analyze what we saw out there. And on that play, I saw a defense staying in base, not taking a chance, not blitzing in a situation where they absolutely need the football back. That's either a case of overthinking it or not thinking it through. If you do blitz, do you have to be careful about where you're coming from or are you just coming from all angles? You have to be careful about where you're coming from, obviously. But at this stage, you have to take a few chances as well. Well, the offense has had a big day. He's been great running the football, but I don't think anybody liked that last result. No, they didn't like the last result at all, but they have to look at it in total, don't they? They've had a big day running the football. You take an occasional loss or an occasional bad play along the way, but all in all, they have to like what they've done. And he's going to be out of bounds down around the 35-yard line. 
So five yards here, five on the play. Third and seven now. From the gun on third down, here's Stroud. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And they'll get him to the ground. And he has another first down at the Colts 17-yard line. A big one there for the Texans, 18 yards. Right there, he rose to the occasion late in a close game. It's something he thought about, dreamed about, and worked on throughout his career. Because in these types of situations, he wasn't going to allow extra coverage to keep him from getting the football. They'll run on first down with Singletary. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. On running plays, linemen, of course, have their assignments. That's expected. But it's not often you're expecting to see a cornerback blitzing in run support and tackling the runner for a loss. If nothing else, they've already taken a couple minutes off the clock here already as they come up second down. Stroud now on second down. The throw here right sideline falls incomplete. And when you're in a one-score game in the second half, now's not the time to force the football to places where you shouldn't. And that's a smart decision to just get that one out of there. A long way to go here on third down for the eighth play of the drive. Play action. Here's Stroud. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. Those throwing windows get a lot tighter near the end zone, don't they? And here's the thing. You already probably have three points in your hip pocket. You force a throw here and give up an interception, you come away with nothing. And especially tough in the middle third of the field where he threw that one. The kick by Fairbairn is good. And that'll move their lead up to four now. So they get the three, but you wonder now, is that going to be enough? Excellent question, because when I look at the smiles on that side of the field, they're a little tight, aren't they? If they had scored a touchdown there, those would be big half-moon grins right now because they'd feel a whole lot better about their position. Uh, and a touchdown in the other direction, all of a sudden, they're down. the made field goal he'll send this one away and he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22 Indianapolis offense ready to go again and the way their last drive ended boy it was frustrating they had a pretty good drive going it was sustained and then it stalled out Charles and they missed the field goal and got nothing out of it is that insult to injury because they had such a sustained drive, as you noted. So you know for the head coach, it almost felt like a little bit of failure to send out the field goal unit and then not even see the ball go through the post. What a bummer on that last drive for them. Got to pick themselves up from that one. We'll definitely see some open running lanes, and he's taking advantage of it right now. But that shouldn't be a surprise. Defense has the lead. They're playing for the pass first. From up near the 40 now after the big play to start, here's another first and 10. That one finds Pierce right side. It'll go down as a gain of six, and that's going to bring up second down. Now it's Richardson. Today's NFL, these big guys are featured receivers. They move all over the place to try and find good matchups. And they had one, they were just unable to complete the pass. This a big play from both sides. What will we see here? Third and four. Richardson looking to throw. Now here 
Here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he's on to punt for Indianapolis. Fair catch signaled for and taken at about the 15-yard line. It'll wind up just a 35-yard punt, no return, and it will be first and 10 as they take over. Out comes the Houston offense as they get set to take over here. Right now clinging to a one-score lead, Charles, and I think operating within that four-minute offense with a little less than four minutes to go applies here, right? It certainly does, and that means the playbook is still wide open. But you are a little bit more careful about what you're calling. You want plays that are going to gain yardage, how would you say it, consistently, mm -hmm. right? You don't need the big shots downfield, but make sure the clock continues to run. Pile up the first down, and the goal end the game with your quarterback kneeling down at the end and you still have the lead one play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10 on the bootleg Stroud he's got it to Collins complete and he's going to be out of bounds but not before he takes it inside the 40 22 more yards there and another first down. With that last completion, CD is now over 400 yards passing in the game, and quite a few of those have come via some pretty big strikes downfield. Certainly not afraid to challenge this secondary, and it's been successful. I like your observation there, partner, because I agree. This is a goal more than capable of torching a secondary any week is evidenced by their combined stat line here. And in the time we have remaining, one shock me at all to see them take another deep shot. Well, so far, little to no resistance by the defense on this drive alone. Three passes, three completions, three first downs. They're taking it to them, and it's paying off. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So it's Texans football as we welcome you back. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. Five points of contact necessary at this stage as they'll run on first down. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ballgame. This, in all probability, another run here on second and eight. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. Now the Colts going to burn the second of their timeouts. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. And for the Colts, an extra defensive back in there now on third down. To throw with Stroud. I oh, had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. And that's a crusher right there. Had his man open for a first down, threw a fastball when that wasn't necessary. Incomplete pass. When are these quarterbacks going to learn? You don't get extra points for how hard you throw the football. The kick by Fairbairn is good, and that'll make this a seven-point game. So that gets him a little bit of breathing room, but not much. And you have to think back to the field goal that he missed earlier. This would be a two-score game right now if he had converted then. And if you and I are thinking about it, you know he is as well, because in the back of his mind, he's thinking, I hope I get one more shot in an important spot. He just made that one. He wants one more later to truly make up for the earlier miss. Fairbair now following the made field goal. He'll send this one away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. So Richardson and the Colts now down by seven. Just over a minute, 40 to play. They need a touchdown to the PAT to tie it as they come up first and 10. And he short arms that one just a bit. It's low and incomplete. 
The way he's throwing the football today, almost a surprise when he doesn't complete <laughs> a pass like happened there, but he needs a few more to get his guys downfield. Well, the way he's thrown it leads him to believe that he's going to get those completions, and that means the guys going out for passes, they'll run even harder because they expect it as well. Richardson to throw it. Look at the big fella go. And finally brought down at the 34-yard line. I like the design that we're seeing right there. This is what they need. Down by a touchdown here in the fourth. They just need to keep working their way downfield. And when they see openings, take their shots. Just the one timeout remaining as they try to navigate this two-minute drill. First and ten. On first down, they look downfield, and it's complete. Isaiah McKenzie with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Colts are an extra point away from tying this game here in the final minutes. Well, the hard part's done. Now they just need to split the post, tie it up, but then their defense is going to have to hold up to send it to overtime. Yeah, no matter what. I know there's an inclination in it when you have momentum to go for two here, but if you miss it, you don't give your defense a chance at all. Plus, it's been a good game. I want to see overtime. I'm selfish. <laughs> you obviously don't have a flight to catch tomorrow. Don't forget the extra point. It's up and good, and we are tied here in the fourth quarter. Now this one setting up for a great finish. All tied in the fourth as the kick's away. And he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. Getting set to go again here, Robert Woods marches back onto the field. And I know that they double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. Inside a minute to go. Here's second and ten now. On second down, here's Pierce. And forget that 100-yard rushing game, at least for the moment, as he'll lose yardage here and fall back under the century mark for the game. Well, that sets up a big third down. Now the decision has to be, do you run it here and play for OT, or do you go ahead and press it downfield? Well, here's a big one. You can just feel it. This is third down now. Going for it with Pierce. And he'll be stopped after a very short gain. And now you're looking at fourth down. Well, they got off the field on third down. An excellent job, an excellent defensive series. We always talk about adjustments and usually only at halftime. But the best teams adjust series to series. And on that series, they adjusted so well that they got the job done in fine style. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. And a fair catch called for and made just inside the 35-yard line. Four quarters, not enough. We're all even, and to overtime we go. How much fun is this for everyone who's watching the game? How much fun is it for us to see this one get an extra period to get settled? chance to win it here first as we're back underway in overtime from a yard or two deep here comes a return and only able to get this to the 19 so probably should have opted for the touchback here comes the Colts offense now as they make their way onto the field 
This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. Second down and four. Richardson dials up the first throw of overtime. Now that's into the hands of Mo Alley Cox, the tight end. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gives him a first down. Fifth catch of the game for him there. Yeah, the tight end position is now becoming a volume pass catcher. It used to be occasional, right, safety valve, throw one to him every so often, but more, mainly they want him out there to block. Nowadays, an integral part of the passing game, and they create such great mismatches that they often become the leading receiver. Now Richardson is going to keep it running right and trying to push forward, but he is going to be stuffed up in the backfield. So following the hold, they're in a bit of a hole here with a first and 20. The throw on target to his receiver, McKenzie. And he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. The completion, but they go in the wrong direction. A loss of yards, and now they're dealing with a second and long. And that was a heck of a play there on the outside. Partner, sometimes I think on a play like this as a corner, you've got to think to yourself, all i got to do is slow him down so others can come over and support. But in this case, he said, forget that. I've got this. Sorry you had to make the run for nothing, fellas. In today's football, the receivers break tackles, make people miss, <laughs> get up here for the extra yardage. When you see a play like that where it's caught and he's dropped on the spot, that's a big-time play by the defense. They need 12 here. It's third down. Back to the air with Richardson. He finds his man complete. It's McKenzie. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. 27 yards there on a very nice third down conversion. But the kind of game he's had so far, you had to know that on third down, that they would be looking his way, and they did for big yardage and a first down. I think the defense fell asleep at the switch on that one. I would have doubled him, tripled him, anything to keep the ball out of his hands. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 43. On the option, they'll hand it to Moss. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. They've created a nice sustained drive off of plays like that. A nice strong run there that keeps them advancing the ball. Here's a second and five. Richardson. Quick slant caught by Pierce. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 27-yard line. This is a big spot for a rookie QB, and overtime's kind of where you earn your stripes, isn't it? It really is, and we've talked with enough coaches and players about how these youngsters are getting into the game and playing this at such a high level so early. But overtime, that's an entirely different animal, and he's handling it well. They're starting to put together a nice drive. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. Well, a momentary speed bump there with that throw, partner. The defense had other ideas, and they're trying to mount a small stand before this drive reaches the end zone. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Second and ten, back to the air with Richardson. That'll be caught over the middle by Moss. And he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. They'll try and run for this with Moss. And he's able to pick up the first down before he's tackled right at the 10. 
70 yards on the ground for him now as he's done that on 15 carries. And I know you, with every carry, especially in overtime, you're just saying, if you're that ball carrier, hold on to the football. Hold on to it, protect it, but not necessarily settling because you're trying to get to the end zone. You're trying to end the game right here. And I know the defensive guys poking, clawing, breaking, trying to knock the ball free and protect their end zone. Yeah, like you alluded to, especially this part of the field. That's a play to applaud because these RPOs, things happen so quickly. And that ball is out of the quarterback's hands fast. He read it and reacted and was there to hit him as the ball arrived at the receiver. Big time read, big time play. On second down, here's a run with Moss. And here he'll get it down to the seven. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. Third down, here's Richardson. This is caught. Touchdown! And that's just another in a long line of passing touchdowns for him today. To say that he's been on fire would definitely be an understatement. Gay is on for the point after. And they will take a seven-point lead now. So that one, a 13-play drive in total. And the result for the Colts is a touchdown. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. Houston set to take over. First throw of overtime, Stroud. Right side completes and Mechie. And they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. An ideal beginning of the drive there as they'll get 20 and a first down. And now a tip of the cap to the man under center, Charles. He just went over 400 yards passing in this ball game. He's got the touchdown passes to boot, taking pretty good care of the ball. Just all around a really solid performance. Yeah, just check, 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 and check, right? Because he certainly showed he was worthy of the trust that his team put in him. A handful of touchdowns to his credit thus far. Now he's just crossing off yardage milestones and win or lose. His name has to be in serious discussion for player of the game. Here's second and three. A give, Singletary right side. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Singletary with a good gain, and after four seasons and 3,100 yards in Buffalo, he signed with Houston this offseason. Welcome reinforcements for a ground game that was second to last in the NFL a season ago. First and ten, it's Stroud. And his throw's going to be incomplete. Once that ball was popped in the air, you could almost hear the silence, the collective breath being held here in the stadium. Let's be honest about it. We both came out of our chairs, didn't we? All right, anytime you see the ball in the air like that, there is that collective rise, the crowd holding its breath, and boy, oh boy, the moment of truth as it comes down. Man, that was something. Everything magnified here in overtime. Now a deep ball there on second down, but it'll wind up incomplete. Well, partner, I think the defensive fellas got the memo, and they decided to cover him on that play. Yeah, he's already up over 100 yards in this game. They tried a deep shot, couldn't get him. Yeah, when you've had that much success, finally, someone said, let's try and put a stop to it and put people on him. 
Stroud on third down now. And now another one thrown incomplete. And this defense definitely in his head there on third down, and he's pretty fortunate. They didn't call for grounding on this one. That was a good 10 feet over everyone's head. A big call here in overtime. They're going for it on fourth down. Fourth down, Stroud going to try to throw for it. That is caught, and he'll go out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. Hey, nothing to see here, just your standard fourth down gain of 28 yards, and the drive keeps going. We always talk about big-time players make big-time plays in big-time moments. I think that fourth down qualified. That was a heck of a throw. So after the big play on fourth, here's first and ten. The throwing again is Stroud. Oh, it's intercepted. That'll seal it. And the Colts are going to take possession here. It's a touchback, and they'll take over at the 20-yard line. Gigantic play by this defense, Charles. So they came back in the fourth quarter, took the momentum into overtime, and now they take the football. And how do you think the team that just threw the pick feels right now? They surrendered the lead, got to overtime, had a chance to redeem themselves, and now they put the game in jeopardy with another pick. And guess what? Their defense has to hold.